I made a mistake, and I take full responsibility for it. Poor judgment over the weekend. Justin Blackman arrested on DUI charges this morning. He is now suspended indefinitely. Blackman pleaded guilty after being arrested back in December on DUI charges. The first concerns with Justin Blackman began as a 20-year-old in his sophomore year at Oklahoma State. He was arrested for DUI after being pulled over for going 92 miles per hour in a 60 zone at 3.45 in the morning. Something that stood out in the immediate follow-up was Coach Mike Gundy's comments on the arrest, which seemed somewhat dismissive of the issue. I've got two sides of the story, but as always, in fairness to everybody involved, we gather all the information before we make any decisions. Not trying to hide anything. Not trying to put anything off, but it wouldn't be smart for us to make an assumption or set a standard until we have all the information. Regardless of the amount of booze that was in his system, or how busy the road was, or any of the other qualifiers, the hammer should have been dropped then and there. I'm not talking about cutting him, but instead giving him a scared straight moment. Something severe enough that would make him consider what he was at risk of losing if he continued down that path. When all the dust settled, Gundy suspended Black for one game. One game. But why was his discipline so light? Well, Justin Blackman was a generational talent, and Oklahoma State could not afford to have him not on the field. In back-to-back -back seasons, Justin Blackman won the Bolitnikoff Award as the best receiver in college football, and to this day is only one of two players to achieve that mark. He drew comparisons to the legendary Andre Johnson, a big-bodied receiver with the ability to make tough catches in traffic and turn short passes into explosive plays. He attacked the ball in the air, had strong hands, ran precise routes, and was a willing blocker. Across those two years, he tallied 233 catches, 3,304 yards, 38 touchdowns, and in the 2010 season, he had 12 100-yard receiving games. At 6 foot 1, 210 pounds, he was a plug-and-play, pro-ready athlete, and he would have the ability to make an immediate impact on whatever team was lucky enough to draft him. If you're too young and never saw Justin Blackman play in college, just imagine Jamar Chase's hype when he was was coming out of LSU, but a bigger athlete with an even more decorated college career. Jacksonville traded up with Tampa Bay to take Blackman fifth overall in the 2012 draft, and simply put, they were smitten. Soon after he was drafted though, more cracks began to show. This is where you're going to build your habits that take you into the season. What were some of the problems you were having towards the end of the practice? Legs, dead, uh, cramping. I learned that I'm not as healthy as I should be. Shortly after the initial camps wrapped, on June 3rd, he was arrested for aggravated DUI. Justin, you got any comments to your fans? No comment. However, he was released from custody the same day he was taken in, and this might have been the worst thing that could have happened to him. Once again, if he'd been processed and punished for the DUI, he could have faced some form of disciplinary action and been forced to get treatment for alcohol abuse right off the bat. But instead, this small cancer would metastasize into something more deadly over the course of the next two years. Before we get into his downfall, let's talk about Justin Blackman's rookie year. He started 14 games, had 64 catches, 865 yards, 5 touchdowns. These stats don't tell you the full story of his capabilities. His performance against the Texans, however, give us a glimpse of what would be possible when every Everything clicked for him. Against Houston, Blackman caught seven passes for 236 yards and a touchdown. This was good enough to place him third all-time on the list for most receiving yards in a single game by a rookie receiver. He was explosive after the catch and made multiple clutch plays. Look at this catch on third and 21. He makes a difficult catch in traffic surrounded by three defensive backs and then turns that into a touchdown. And how about this 15-yard catch on a dig route on fourth and 10 in overtime? He showed that those ridiculous ridiculous games at Oklahoma State could be recreated at the pro level. But just a year after being drafted, and a few months after wrapping up his rookie campaign, Blackman was handed a four-game suspension for violating the NFL substance abuse policy. He served his four-game suspension and had seemingly learned from his mistakes. And in his first game back, he put on a show. He caught five passes for 136 yards and a touchdown, and then followed up that performance by dominating the Broncos with 14 catches 
catches and 190 yards. Jacksonville's star receiver was back. He'd learned from his mistakes and he was ready to have an amazing sophomore season. Not quite. A few weeks later, during the Jaguars' bye week, Blackman was suspended indefinitely for violating the NFL's policy and program for substances of abuse, and this meant he'd miss the rest of the 2013 season. It didn't end there, though. In July of 2014, Blackman was arrested for possession of marijuana during a traffic stop, and this would keep his suspension in place for the 2014 season as well. After the 2014 season and his second consecutive year of not playing, he voluntarily checked himself into a rehab facility and tried to get himself reinstated in the league for the 2015 season. However, he was denied. Finally, in December 2015, he was arrested for another DUI, and this time was sentenced to one year in jail. The sentence wound up being suspended, so he never did go to jail, but that was it for Justin Blackman in the NFL. It's wild to think that Justin Blackman never touched an NFL field again after those four games in 2013, but the snowball effect of his addiction became too overwhelming and destroyed his chance at potentially going down as one of the 2010's best players. Justin Blackman had the ability to write his own ticket. He could have made hundreds of millions of dollars. He could have set records. He could have helped turn his team into a contender. But the disease of addiction does not discriminate, and it doesn't matter what your prospects in life are. That's the hard part about being so talented in team sports. Your coaches, athletic directors, and owners can only succeed through your performance. So getting you the help that you need and pulling you off the field hurts their job security. I'm not trying to blame others for Justin Blackman's actions. He made the bed that he now sleeps in. But you have to wonder what his career might have looked like if he'd been forced to seek help after his DUI at Oklahoma State, or if he'd been punished more severely after his DUI just months after being drafted. By not adequately disciplining him for his actions, Justin Blackman was enabled to keep acting the same way. He was a young man who needed boundaries, but he was too good of a football player to truly get the help that he needed. I really hope that he can take the necessary steps that he needs to get his life back on track and to come to peace with what he lost. Guys, thank you so much for watching. We are back from vacation. Very pumped about it. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And let's keep pushing this thing. Let's get to a thousand sooner rather than later. Really pumped. Thank you. And we'll talk soon.